Hello, and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show where we talk to you about one really cool thing that we've been testing out here in PC Labs. I'm Tom Brandt, this is Sasha Segan, and today for you we have got a, uh, what appears to be an old phone, but it's not actually, it's a brand new phone geared mainly towards seniors, um, and uh, we're gonna be talking to you about this today. So Sasha, what have, what have we got here? So what we have here is the Snapphone Easy 2 3G, and I wanna talk about the whole senior thing because yes. I find this a little controversial. Uh, by the way, first of all, if you folks are watching live on Facebook, please ask questions, make comments in the comments field. Social Pete will bring you, uh, will, will bring us your comments. We will have a discussion. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, obviously this isn't live, uh, but uh, we are alive. We are not undead or yes, anything like that. Exactly, and because there's so few, little audience for this these days, we want to know your your, your thoughts and, and, and what you think about the phone. Well, okay, okay, so it's or not actually, yeah. <laughs> so about 15% of people in the United States are still on what I call voice phones. 15, okay. 15% of people are still on voice phones. And now if you think of this as a country of 350 million people, that's still a market yeah. of 30, 40 million people. Yeah. Like that's the size of some medium European countries, mm -hmm. you know, that are still using voice phones. And they use voice phones for a range of reasons. They may use voice phones because they are uh, they, they, they are uh, Luddites who <laughs> uh, don't want to be connected all the time. They may use voice phones because they're giving them to kids and they don't want the kids to be on the internet all the time. Uh, they may be uh, older people who aren't into the latest technology. Okay. Now, when you say voice phone, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about a phone that really, it, it can be used for texts, right? Yeah, it's voice text phones. text and voice, but no data. Yeah, when I look at voice phones, and we've reviewed a bunch of voice phones recently, the Snap phone is the one we are talking about most today, but I have this LG here, and there's a Kyocera, and here's one by a company which is pretending to be Nokia, and um, so they, they can generally send and receive text, mm -hmm. They may have a basic web browser on them that is mm -hmm. very painful and difficult to use. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they generally have a couple of other features. Like for instance, the Snap phone has a really easy to access flashlight. Right. Uh, but they are primarily for making voice calls. Yeah, and so that's, yeah, hence the, 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 the idea of a voice phone. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, let's start off with that. How good is this at talking on the phone? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, now, now what? Um, let's let's talk about the pluses and minuses okay. here. Okay, so the Snap Phone, as you can see, it has a really, really easily visible screen, an extremely simple interface, almost no interface at all. Yeah. Um, it has a bunch of switches on the side, like this switch is a dedicated switch for the LED flashlight. Which is an amazing idea for people who go to re dimly lit restaurants and can't see very well. Yep, yep. And then on the but on the side here, this is a dedicated button for the extremely poor quality camera. But you don't want to take pictures with this camera, but it turns out that the camera also functions as a magnifying glass. Yes, okay. So that if you're in that dark restaurant and also the words on the menu are too small to see, you can flip on the camera, hit the magnify button, and the words get a little bigger and more readable on this screen. Now, I, I did notice, however, when we were when we were testing this out, that the magnifying glass obviously uses the rear facing camera, but the LED flashlight is on the side of the yeah. phone. So essentially, you've That's got- That's not a great design. You've gotta flip it back and forth a It's bit. not the best design that yeah. way. Okay, yeah. so, so uh, and you have the really big buttons. Um, sound quality here is good. Okay. Okay, it's good. It works with Bluetooth headsets mm -hmm. uh, pretty well. Uh, better than better than this guy, for instance. Um, you don't uh, you don't have some more advanced features like uh, you, you you don't have voice dialing. Okay. Okay. That's that's kind of a big minus here. Um, Is there any type of voice recognition at all? Like, can you? There, there's there's it's literally just typing in numbers or accessing the phone book. Yeah, typing in numbers or accessing the phone book. Okay. The phone book is really hard to program. Mm. Okay, um, harder than a cordless phone or no, about like, about like a cordless phone. The, cordless the thing phone? is, it doesn't sync with anything. Right. If you look at some of these carrier voice phones, 
Okay, they will, these Verizon voice phones, for instance, will sync with a cloud service that uh -huh. Verizon has. Uh -huh. So you can enter in your phone book on the web, yeah. which makes it a lot easier than entering it on the 9-pad. Mm -hmm. With this one, you, you have to enter in all the stuff on the 9-pad. That said, if you, ha if you have had a phone like this for several years, you're probably already used to doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, if this is your first phone, it might be a bit of a learning curve. Yeah. But. Now, also, also in terms of network capability, okay, uh, something I want to talk about a little is that, uh, so this phone supports uh, the AT&T 3G network mm -hmm. and the T-Mobile 2G network. Interesting. And that is okay. And those networks will remain online for at least the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the energy in terms of network building and in terms of extended coverage is now shifting to 4G LTE. But now, okay, so but you say 2G, 3G, 4G LTE, but data doesn't matter for this phone, right? So why is it why is it operating on the 2G or 3G network? Because, well, so phone calls have to be made on a network, uh -huh. okay? And 2G, 3G, 4G, these systems are incompatible with each other. Okay. So, uh, and what we're finding right now is that, for instance, take T-Mobile, okay? T-Mobile's 2G network is on a relatively high frequency band that doesn't necessarily have great range. Mm -hmm. They are right now starting to lay in a low band 4G network that has really great rural range. Mm -hmm. You won't be able to access, you won't be able to make calls on that network so, with this phone. So, but if, if you could, those phone calls are being transmitted over the same frequencies that the data yes, is yes, going yes. over. Yes, yes, yes. They're basically voice over IP nowadays. Okay. Okay. Um, and that's why, for instance, these Verizon voice phones have LTE. And so they are a little more future proof mm -hmm. than this one, which works on AT&T and T-Mobile. Right. Um, and only AT&T and T-Mobile. And only AT&T and T-Mobile. But this also guy. some virtual networks. Yeah. Now, one of the things that is, is, a, is a big advantage here is that it works on these really, really cheap virtual network plans mm -hmm. for companies that borrow or kind of not don't borrow. They rent time right. from AT&T and T-Mobile. And these are companies with names like Red Pocket or uh, Ting or Tello or Twigby. And these all let you get service for $10 a month around, okay? We're talking $10, $15 a month. Um, and so you can get service for this little snap phone for much less per month than you can with your typical major carrier service plan. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the Snapphone EZ2 3G. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook, please ask us your questions. It looks like we've got some right now. Someone wants to know what charger that uses. Is it like a micro USB? Micro USB. Very standard micro USB. Nothing to worry about. If you have a micro USB around or you want to buy one for five bucks at Walgreens, uh, then yeah, it is a standard micro USB. Uh, standby battery life is very good. It'll last days and days because it's a voice phone. Mm -hmm. uh, talk time, not that great, maybe four and a half hours. So this is uh, not for com long conference calls. This is for quick, you know, I'm at the grocery store, do you need anything? Yeah, this is, a, this is a safety phone or yeah. a backup phone or a phone for people who don't talk that much but need a phone. Now, I also want to show you this SOS uh, button on the back Another here. safety feature. Yeah, another safety feature. SOS button, hold it down for three minutes, it'll, uh, three seconds, sorry, sorry. It'll start sounding an alarm and will also call a custom emergency contact that, that you've, you've put in. That you've programmed in there. Right, okay, right. So let's, let's try that out. And so the idea here is because it's a custom emergency contact, it doesn't have to be 911. So, mm -hmm. for instance, if you give this phone to a child, it could be your number. Yeah. If you give this phone to your parent, it could be your number. If you have this phone yourself, it could be 911. Yeah, now I want to talk about one of the most like, uh, astonishing things that I felt when I picked this phone up, but before we do that, let's, let's take a question. Why does it play that low siren sound? Like, what's the utility <laughs> of that? Um, it is supposed to alert people around you that there is something bad happening. Yeah, and is that the maximum noise level on that, or do you, um, does it is it correspond to the to the speaker? Yeah, that's about yeah, that's, the volume. That's about it. That's about the so, volume. So yeah, it mm -hmm. is. It is not actually. I mean, it, you it's know, it's not that loud. It's not that loud, and the the tone is is not like rumbling low. It, it, it's a phone after yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. It's more just that. It's more just that when it's going off and while it's making its call to its emergency contact, it's supposed to alert people around you that hey, somebody might need help. Now, the thing that I noticed about this phone is it is very light. 
and it feels a bit flimsy. When, I, when, you, when you touch these rockers on the side, they are not locked into place as you might expect. They're actually kind of almost by design loose. And that's one of my concerns about the Snap Phone. I mean, I'm giving this a three and a half star review, uh -huh. which means it's pretty good. It has a lot of good things. But it's not perfect. Okay. And and that the fact that uh, the fact that the rockers do feel a little loose, the the build doesn't feel rock solid, um, especially when you consider that this is going to be given to people who may be a little bar fingers. Yeah. Um, that concerns me a little bit. Now that said, I've knocked it around. And because frankly there's so few components in here, it's not that complicated. Right. It can definitely withstand falls. Yeah. Drops are not a problem. There's a plastic screen. It's not going to crack. Um, and the idea is also that this is not an expensive phone. This is $50, it's I believe? It's $79 unlocked. Unlocked. And which, okay. you, which if you want the cheap service plan, you're probably going to pay $79 right, unlocked. Right, right, right. Um, so, so my concern here is that while it had no trouble with drop tests, you know, will it last several years? I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not 100% willing to make that statement. And of course, I can't tell you whether or not it will last several years as we have not had it for several years. Yeah, um, let's take another question. How large is it, just to give people a sense, and, and how does that compare to- My hands like are not that big. My, my hands, hands are, are big. very big. Yeah, my uh, hand, let's put it in a small hand than a big hand. Okay, so okay. there you go, the small hand I have hand small version. hands like our president. Okay, so <laughs> here, here we go, in the presidential <laughs> hand. You have, you have, you have I will hands. say I have, Big hands like our president <laughs> wants, okay. wants to have. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's it's a good size, and but the thing is not so important about this overall size of the phone. It's how big the buttons are. And the buttons are great on this thing. Yeah. Okay, the buttons are big and rubbery yeah. and separated. Yeah. And if you look at any of these other phones that we have here to compare it with, the buttons are not as big. I don't think any of these phones have. Well, no, this they, one might. They, but, they have decent buttons. Yeah. This looking at this little Nokia, for instance, these are these are little, uh, you know, much smaller buttons on this one. Um, on the other, the other, mm. I was gonna say, the other great thing about this, the buttons are not connected. Uh, many many yeah. flip phones and other, you know, feature phones that are designed for seniors, for, for some reason the, uh, they have, they've, what they've done is they've actually joined the buttons in, uh, in a membrane beneath the plastic case, mm -hmm. which effectively makes them almost impossible to press uh, one at a time because you're, you're, you're getting the, um, you know, you're getting like an entire row of presses at once. It's very frustrating to text on mm -hmm, something like that. Mm -hmm. I want to point out another uh, another thing for people with, and this is a good phone for people with uh, kind of impaired vision or uh, or those kinds of disabilities. It has a feature in here I'm not going to set up right now. I was double checking called Speaking Keypad, mm. where uh, it will read out everything you press. Oh, okay. So. In a, in a computer voice. In a computer voice. Okay. But it's for people who their eyesight is failing. Yeah. Okay. They are, you know, they are they are really having trouble with, like this would frustrate them. Right. You know, maybe they have motor problems. Yeah. Um, this phone is great for that kind of th that that kind of audience. Yeah, and that's something that you know you will probably use at home. But if you are like in a busy place or something, it's not going to be able to, you know, hear that well. Like it's probably something that is really only useful in your living room or something like that. Yeah. Well, so so, I don't feel like this is the kind of phone that a lot of the people watching our webcast <laughs> or watching us on YouTube are necessarily going to want to buy for themselves. No, but, but you might need someone to buy it for. It's I mean, the you, kind you of might, phone yeah. where you might have somebody in yeah. your family who you want to buy it for. That's the thing. Where you, the person watching this, you are the influencer. You are the person who uh, other people in your family who know less about technology are coming to you for recommendations. And this is the kind of phone that you can recommend to them, whether it be to your to your grandma, or to your niece or nephew, or to your uh, uh, friend or relative who has uh, maybe a vision or motor disability, um, this is this is the kind of phone that it's good to know about, right. so that when they come to you and they say, "I'm frustrated." you can say, hey, there's this device which might be able to solve some of your frustrations. Now, but let's cover our bases here quickly because if they come to you, if your mother or father comes to you and says, uh, you know, and you have you have kids of your own and, and, and they say, well, I want to get, um, you know, emojis from my grandkids, 
don't recommend this. No, this phone is not up to date when it comes to messaging. And this is, this is a big minus with a lot of these simple phones, okay? Texting is very painful on this phone. It is possible, but it is extremely painful. But also, this particular phone has an extremely basic character set, so no emojis will show up. Mm -hmm. It can also, um, yeah, so, so no emojis. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I think that that's one of the, the key things. You know, the learning curve for smartphones seems steep, but, you know, many people, grandparents especially, would get enjoyment out of communicating with, with the people. That, now, that, that said, if you, you step know. up to, say, the Kyocera Cadence on Verizon, which is $120 and is on Verizon, uh, we have a slightly more advanced operating system, and this one can receive emojis. Okay. So, and it has, uh, yeah, it can receive emojis, and it has T9 predictive texting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this one would be a little better, but if, you're, if, if your family communicates through over-the-top uh, messaging programs, such as Facebook Messenger, such yeah. as WhatsApp, yeah. such as, um, what else is out there? Viber, you know, Line, Snapchat. you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, uh, well, forget Snapchat. But, <laughs> but if, if your family communicates through those sorts of OTT messaging programs, these voice phones are really left out of the mix. Yeah. And then you need a smartphone. Now, there are smartphones out there that have simplified interfaces. Uh, Samsung smartphones have something called an easy mode. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's, um, the Jitterbug Smart, mm -hmm. which is a smartphone especially for seniors, specifically yeah. uh, seniors with health problems, mm -hmm. um, which can kind of bring them up to that next level while still having a simplified interface. So uh, that's some of the other options you might consider, but for something that's extremely simple and has a few really useful features like an LED flashlight. And works with those $10 a month <clears throat> service plans yeah. from those MVNOs. Like that's something which I really want to underscore. The, the, the advantage of something like the Snap Phone, the Snap Phone Easy 2 3G, is that it works with these extremely inexpensive prepaid service plans from these small companies. And if you look at on our website, we have a, uh, a story called uh, the best cheap cell phone plans you've never heard of, yeah. which is a profile of a lot of these small companies that have the really inexpensive plans. And don't mistake those for, for you know, fly-by-night type things. These are services that work on Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, yeah, yeah, using yeah. the same network, mm -hmm. it's just cheaper. Looks like we've got one more question. We've got a, f a general phone tech question. Uh, is a smartphone with Wi-Fi spec AX or AG faster than AC Wi-Fi? Oh, man. Um... Depends on the Wi-Fi. Well, no, AX, I believe AX is, I'm not familiar with AG. AD is 60 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. I believe AX is is faster, but I don't think we've seen any AX phones yet. Um, yeah, I that's, think that's one of the things that's coming with the Snapdragon 845, isn't it? That sounds like a more theoretical question at this point. Also, because even if you could get one of those phones, your what do we know about AX routers? Have you tested any AX routers? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know anything about routers. Okay. okay. No, I, we don't. We don't. I don't test routers. Some of our, our colleagues do, but um, in general, though, comparing LTE speeds to Wi-Fi is it, it's entirely dependent on the the strength of the, the not necessarily the AC signal from your router, but you know how good of an internet speed you have. So yeah, well, yeah. I mean, th that's the thing. So AX is. AX is faster, but yeah, I'm looking here just to double check to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. AX is faster, but I do not believe we have seen any AX phones yet. So it's a theory. Let's take another question. Someone wants to know, why don't they have Alexa on any of the phones yet for seniors or kids? Yeah, we briefly asked, we briefly addressed that. There is no voice recognition on this. Uh, there's no voice recognition on this, but there's voice recognition on these. Oh, for okay. instance, these have nuance powered, uh, nuance powered voice recognition. And then specifically Alexa. Yeah, why so is that Alexa, not? it is because um, it's because uh, basically to operate Alexa it takes a smartphone backend, and so you need to be you basically need to be running a smartphone operating system, and so you need to get up to smartphone mm -hmm. power and complexity levels, and uh, people haven't really been able to crack that crack that code yet. Um, to put that on of, a tiny processor. Like well, to, this, to, to, put, to put that on something that is uh, that simplified and that inexpensive. Now, yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's an operating system out there that has a lot of potential that I'm following. We don't have the phone here because it is because the first phone of its kind with this new OS is not very good. But there's an OS out there called KaiOS. Okay. K 
A A I O S. A I O S. Yes, K A I O S. K A I O S. And now Kai OS is a descendant of Firefox OS, and we are starting to see it appear on simple phones, hmm. on voice phones. Okay. Uh, the first one is called the Alcatel Go Flip, mm -hmm. uh, uh, otherwise known as the AT&T Flip 2. Which is not very good. Which <laughs> is unfortunately not very good, but but KaiOS has the potential to have this kind of expansion. Yeah. And if you can program, for instance, an HTML5 version of Alexa, which may be possible, mm -hmm. then you could get that onto KaiOS phones and then you would be able to see that happen in the simple phone landscape. And so that would, that would be able to develop. But the, the, the short answer to your question is um, Alexa requires a lot of power in yeah. the device that we're not necessarily seeing in these devices. And you know, the idea of putting that on, on, on a simple phone like this, there's much higher margins for things to go wrong. Um, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you're using this, you're probably not going to be doing much troubleshooting, and so right. that's, that's, that's a mm -hmm. minus. It's the same reason why you know, Airbus doesn't put newer chips in, 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 to power airplanes. They've, mm -hmm. they've, you know, they're reliable, the older ones are reliable, they know how they work, things like that. So um, yeah. Any, any more questions out there? Okay, great. So yes, this is the, the uh, Snapphone, Snapphone Easy, Phone, 2, Easy 3D. 2 3D. Definitely check out the full review. Yeah, it's 80 bucks. Now. It's a 3.5 star phone in that it's got some pluses, it's got some minuses, but it'll be really good for a certain set of people. Um, if you are one of those people or you know one of those people, then thank you for watching. Um, otherwise. And, yeah, otherwise, we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern for yet another one cool thing. Bye bye.